I'm going to tell you how the process of making aviation sustainable provides us a pathway to accelerating the global energy transition. It's a surprise to most people that right now, 80% of the world's energy still comes from burning carbon-based fuel. And it's been freaking hot this summer, right? The West is burning up. My kids are asking, will climate change make Miami wash away? And even with recent legislative changes, is our government going to solve this problem for us? Can the left and the right come together on these issues? I don't think so. I think we're going to have to do this on our own. They'll follow. Author Saul Griffith says the industrial mobilization required to hit the climate targets that our children deserve will take an effort similar to World War II in size, speed, and scope. Only this time, it'll require everyone to fight on the same side. So how do we mobilize that kind of action right now? Well, there is one thing that cuts through all those barriers. It brings solutions to the forefront from all sides and has the potential for rapid, revolutionary change. And that is a big prize. Inspired by the Orteg Prize competition, my grandfather, Charles Lindbergh, had an airplane purpose-built to fly across the Atlantic. And he set out to win the $25,000 prize to be the first person to fly nonstop between the cities of New York and Paris. He flew for 33 hours. And when he landed in Paris, they literally ripped his plane apart. They took chunks off of it. Um, seriously, they were e extremely excited. And it created a global celebration and, the, and a radical shift in the way that the world saw aviation. The number of pilots in America doubled, and the number of pilots buying, people buying tickets on airplanes went up 30 times within two years. That's not just an exponential change, that's a step change. Nine teams spent $400,000 trying to win a $25,000 prize. And all of that research and development went into long-distance air travel. And the brilliant thing about the prize is that Raymond Nortig only had to pay the winner. I like to say, thank this man if you like to travel long distances in a day to fly to Europe. Um, and I don't mean my grandfather. I mean the guy on the right, Raymond Ortiq, the guy who created and funded that prize. People forget that in its infancy, aviation was primarily developed uh, as a result of hundreds of incentive prizes. And I'll give you another more recent example. In 1996, I was with a small group of people under the arch in St. Louis to announce a new prize. It was called the X Prize. And to win, all you had to do was build a spacecraft, <laughs> fly that piloted vehicle into space two times within two weeks, return safely, and you win $10 million. I was so excited about the potential of this prize and inspired by it that I disregarded the advice of my, my family and my friends and supported the prize by retracing my grandfather's flight across the Atlantic in 2002. That was the 75th anniversary of my grandfather's flight. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. It was a big effort. And I have to tell you that 3,600 miles is a long way in a small plane over a big ocean. And way out over the middle, in the dark, emerging from a storm at 10,000 feet, I saw the light of the moon. And I had that feeling that I was cradled in the same sky as my grandfather. And it worked. I survived. Survival was actually my prime directive. Uh, but we raised a million dollars in cash and half a billion media impressions. That was before social media. All focused on the future of flight. And in spite of it being my first trip to France, I flew myself, that was pretty exciting, but that is not a French kiss. <laughs> It was a really old tarmac. And then on October 4th of 2004, Spaceship One took off out of the Mojave Desert and flew up into space and returned safely and won the largest cash prize in history.
That ignited the commercial space flight revolution that we're seeing really develop today um, with Bezos and Branson and uh, Musk vying for our dollars to fly their spacecraft into space. The X Prize was modeled after the Ortega Prize, the one that my grandfather won, and it was incredibly empowering to be a part of a small team of people that got Spaceship One hanging next to the Spirit of St. Louis in the Air and Space Museum. It dramatically demonstrated that prizes are just as powerful in the 21st century as they were at the dawn of aviation. And so we asked ourselves, how do we do that again? The biggest challenge facing our species now is climate change and how to keep this beautiful planet livable. Transitioning from a carbon-based economy to a sustainable energy economy is essential to win that battle against climate change. My colleagues at the Lindbergh Foundation have decided that advancing this energy transition is the right way to solve, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of my grandfather's flight in the spirit of St. Louis, which is coming up in 2027. You see, in 1931, both of my grandparents, my grandmother was also a pilot, flew, started flying over huge swaths of the earth and could see from above that humanity was changing the face of the world. And this was 30 years prior to Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring. From their aerial perspective, they saw that human activity was having a significant impact on the planet, and they became environmentalists before the word environmentalist was even a word. After my grandfather died, astronaut Neil Armstrong and General Jimmy Doolittle and others came together and, and, and founded the Lindbergh Foundation because they wanted to carry on my grandparents' vision of balancing advancing technology with preservation of the environment. That's our mission. We've been doing it for 45 years. Now, aviation is one of the hardest industries to decarbonize because we need very high energy density and it needs to be very low weight. The aviation industry is already working hard on a host of different initiatives to make it sustainable. But there's an entrepreneurial approach that we are now taking to augment and accelerate this transition. The Lindbergh Foundation and the X Prize Foundation have teamed up to create the Forever Flight Alliance to accelerate aviation's transition from carbon fuels to sustainable alternatives. In short, the goal is to replace kerosene jet fuel with fuel made from recycled carbon dioxide. In general, these fuels are called SAFs, or sustainable aviation fuels. And right now, they're expensive, they're limited in quantity, and aren't 100% efficient in getting us to net zero carbon operations. In fact, the aviation industry is counting on purchasing offsets to make up the difference and bring SAFs up to net zero. On the left, left of this slide, there's a list of some of the work that needs to be done in that first phase. Beyond that net carbon zero era, we will fly without any carbon emissions. But the urgency of climate change means we need to accelerate these solutions on this list as fast as we can. And this is our process. Basically, there's two things going on here. Um, a lot of work on a whole disparate array of problems that we can get through that will help to accelerate that transition. And then a large, a long-term focus on the key technical issues that need a prize to break through those barriers. Our XPRIZE partner in the Forever Flight Alliance has already awarded $20 million in prizes for making commercial products from recycled smokestack uh, CO2, the flu stacks of carbon plants. And some of those products included concrete and jet fuel. So we know how to do this. We know how to do prizes, and we know how to get carbon out of um, difficult to recycle areas. Last year, the X Prize announced a $100 million suite of prizes to improve removing carbon directly from the atmosphere. This direct carbon capture could be one of the best offsets to achieve net carbon zero aviation. And these, these carbon prizes prizes have given us a head start and are complementary uh, to our aviation efforts. Now, this energy diagram of the United States shows that almost all of transportation's energy comes from petroleum-based fuels. 
It's dominated by petroleum. And what we learn about energy storage and transport can be applied across the global energy sector. That transition to sustainable energy is an immense and complicated undertaking. But the aviation industry is highly motivated to lead this transition. Now, from the time I was a little boy, I had to learn how to walk in my grandfather's footsteps, knowing that I could never fill his shoes. And all the while, balancing advancing technology with preservation of the environment. What my grandfather and Neil Armstrong were known for was flying across the Atlantic and landing and walking on the moon. But what they really wanted to be known for, in Neil's case, was, was teaching, his professorship, teaching kids. And what my grandfather wanted to be known for was his environmental work. That was more important. He spent the latter half of his life working on that stuff. So we need to make sure, just like my grandfather and Neil did for, for me and for all of us, to make sure that we had the sustainability to, and the freedom to fly and the benefits to fly, um, we need to make that happen for our children. This initiative is important enough that global leaders like Prince Albert II of Monaco, um, pictured here in the center with our mutual friend Max, who turned 100 this year, uh, and the National Business Aviation Association have joined us to accelerate this transition. In only five years, the world will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of my grandfather's epic New York to Paris flight. That's 2027. But just as John Kennedy challenged the United States to land a human on the moon by the end of the 1960s, we choose to make aviation sustainable, not because it's easy, but because it's hard and we need it to be done. The urgency of climate change is just now sinking in for many people. But despite the magnitude of this challenge, civilization is in a life or death race against time. History has shown us that the aerospace community can generally do what is considered impossible. We're used to this, we can do this, but we're gonna need your help. Thank you.